Hi. So our talk is called Meeting the Challenge of Digital Data. And I think it's um, sort of a practical uh, examination of um, how we're putting data into AdLib. So we're going to talk about exploring the functionality of AdLib, uh, which is the library system for cataloging archival materials. Uh, in comparison to previous archival cataloging systems used by the library, AdLib offers a lot of flexibility in how we can create records for both born digital and digitized collections. Joanna Fleming, digital curation specialist, Working with Born Digital Collections, we'll talk about semi-automated record creation for Born Digital Collections. I am Andrew Trigg, acting team leader of the archival team, uh, which is responsible for cataloging original materials acquired by the library. I'm going to talk about bulk creation of records at the same uh, for digitized collections in AdLib using spreadsheets containing descriptive metadata. Uh, the benefits of bulk creation of records for digitized collections include efficiency. Uh, it is a lot easier to upload lots of records at the same time than it is to do one at a time. Thanks. Uh, plus, with bulk creation of records, it is simpler to wrangle larger collections with a lot of descriptive metadata. Uh, changeability. We can easily alter data before putting it into the catalog. Additionally, if data is provided by the vendor in a workable format, we can then amend and map the data based on bibliographic standards and current record creation practices. Uh, the Australian Consolidated Press or ACP archive, part of which is being digitised this year, contains around 230,000 negatives. As you can imagine, it would take ages to enter original catalogue records such as this 235,000 times into AdLib. Uh, bulk creation of original catalogue records can greatly reduce the time it takes to add content and metadata to AdLib. In most cases, with digitized materials, the descriptive metadata is created by library staff. In other cases, the metadata is supplied by the vendor. Whether the source metadata is created in-house or externally supplied, library staff are involved with quality control of the metadata. For example, uh, making sure time, date, and place are all nice and uniform and structured and in accordance with international standards for arrangement and description. Um, Excel spreadsheets are the source for the descriptive metadata for bulk creation of AdLib records. Uh, the flexibility of Excel allows testing and revising to accommodate the intricacies of different collections. This is one which we use to upload some records for the ACP collection. Uh, the Excel spreadsheets are converted to CSVs and Python scripts are used to convert the data into AdLib XML, the format used to import records into AdLib. Uh, here is an example of the file level records created in AdLib using the descriptive metadata entered into the CSV. Uh, as a result, Multiple records are created and viewable and discoverable on the library catalog. Uh, this method of record creation is being used to catalog the Max DePayne and Associates archive, which contains around 166,000 negatives. And I'd also like to point out that this uh, method is also useful for collections which aren't digitized or born digital, but just really big, like Fairfax. Thanks, Joe. interesting listening to everybody else speaking because little facets of what you're talking about is what we're trying to create here or ease what you're doing um, with this process. So I'm going to talk about um, a born digital, what 
we're kind of doing forms to forms. Right now it's a semi-automated process and we're going to go for something more automated and I'll talk about that. So what we're doing is using metadata provided by donors so we kind of get some efficiency there. They're also the experts in their collection so getting as much information from them in spreadsheets. Uh, it's something that CSMD and collection strategy and development were already doing. Um, we're Again, it's a bit of a, an, a sort of semi-automated process, so um, using those spreadsheets to then create file-level metadata and pop those into um, Rosetta, and this will aid discoverability. So just thinking about what Paula said, what Kate said around the metadata that you need, having it embedded in the file, and at file level, if you're sending images out into the wide world, it, there they have our five uh, metadata standard, they have their title, they have their REST code, their MMS ID, they have SL and SW. So they're not like little orphan things out there in the world. So what we're doing, here's an example of a spreadsheet that comes from a client. It's got, um, we've worked closely, we want to actually take the opportunity to say thank you to everybody who was involved in working on this. The um, guys from Collection Strategy and Development, Systems and Applications team, um, Matt, Burgess, and Joseph, who is no longer with us, worked through, and Suzette, sorry, Suzette, working through this, mapping it, you'll see up here, these are the ad lib fields. Oh, Chris Burns also developed the script that we leveraged off to get this happening as well. And then from that, it creates XML that we can import into ad lib and create the ad lib records. So, the difference is the, the collection level record is derived and what we're using is that reference code in AdLib to then create the item level records that fit under that collection. So it's basic, they're very um, basic records that can then go back and be value added to. So what we do from that point, the AdLib item level records exist and we can export those numbers and use those to create the which is a submission information package and you'll hear people calling talking about SIP if you're in any digital preservation discussion that's what Rosetta's little bundle that Rosetta accepts match those up to the record sync it back to the catalog and you'll have all these lovely little item level records so th the good thing here also is that at the moment while we're still in the process of getting this happening and getting it more automated where we have this sort of staging period that people area, sorry, that people call the W drive, if you've heard that banding about. Um, it means that we can limit access to that space. Catalogers can actually go into the ca catalog to look at items to add value add to the collection. So here's an example. So what the, what the spreadsheet had was every file has a title and that is um, turned into a scope and contents list. So it populates the scope and contents list in AdLib and you can see we've added item 1 to to 12 so that it stays in order in this UI and then down here in the hierarchy there are this is the best bit you can click on the links oh here's an image so it's file level there's all the metadata around that file level we we have talked about the idea of adding subjects or more subjects to the spreadsheet but I think that's something that we'll need to consult with further. So this is very basic, but the cataloging staff can go back and add as many subjects. And look, there's the image. And you've got the viewer. That's pretty great. The only, one of the downsides is the viewer experience, but we took this issue to search and discovery development group yesterday because one of the limitations with file level records at the moment is that it's a, it's a one-to-one -one thing. So we see here, It'd be great if you could scroll through and see all of the our items in that collection. But you do get nice, rich metadata at this actual file level. And hopefully in the next coming days, we'll be able to search for the FL and IE number in Primo so that if you're a person out in the world, a client out in the world, and you look at that image, you can jot down that file number and IE and go back into Primo and search for it, which is good. Okay, so what's next? As Andrew mentioned, looking at the benefits for this and what that is, is using spreadsheets and manipulating it, using scripts to create the records in AdLib. 
Um, looking at the benefits for large digital collections, like mentioned Fairfax retained potential as well. Then we're going to look beyond Born Digital Photographs because all we've tested so far are two um, Born Digital Photographic collections. Uh, we want to look at oral history recordings. There's a lot of work that goes on at the Digital Preservation Development Group where we have to work on content models and how, where metadata is going to go and at what level into the catalogue and into Rosetta. So the next thing is we want to look at oral histories as well. There's complexities there around access rights and all that kind of stuff. And then we want to further refine the workflow. So the original title of this was semi-automated process. So that is fairly semi-automated where it's a quite manual at the moment. What we're looking at is SPM is coming, which is the you know, commonly known as the team track for placement, looking at how that might help us with this workflow. So if you've got you're an acquisitions person, you have a fairly straightforward photographic collection, digital photographic collection, it's got beautiful metadata that came from the photographer. You can go down this path, which is a, like a fr fairly straightforward creation of records in ingest, or this is something more complex. I need somebody with archival experience, or I need to talk to DQSS about this, or it's a, it's a file format that I haven't seen before, we can go down that path. So looking at how the, that workflow tool can help us with this workflow, getting it more automated, and then the other thing is the development of Panda, um, which is preservation and digital access. And I've got, I did try to get a link so I could show you a little bit, but I've got a couple of screenshots for this. Um, preservation, it's a software project being undertaken by systems and applications. It's data quality, it was DQSS and digitization and imaging. It's an agile project that we've been running for four months and there's a dedicated developer working on this. And this is the, the step towards automation where it will enable us to, everything I've described to you around um, creating the ad lib records and using the script, Panda can control that, or will control that. But it's essentially automating the bulk processing and ingesting of digitized and born digital backlog images. But the potential for this goes further than that. But that's what we're focusing on at the moment. So this is uh, the prototype, what it looks like. It's a little, the, the dashboard, say. And um, here's an example of one of the tasks that it's going to do for us. So it's um, anybody that works with digital collections um, and anyone in um, CSMD can see that this is going to do a checksum for it. Like it'll, it'll take that, those files, it'll do the checksum, it will um, run the droid report, which is making sure that all the file extensions are kosher. Um, it will do create derivatives, all of that kind of stuff that's fairly manual or limited to small number of people in the library. So what this hopefully long term is going to democratize that whole process where it's going through a very small channel, it means anybody can can use this tool to do this, which is good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so that's at the very, very, very beginning. So we're only four months in and there's lots of user stories that we need to be um, looked at, uh, but this is extremely exciting because I'm hoping well, it will move back towards what we call preconditioning. So when the content comes in and we have to make decisions around um, its authenticity, if this is a born digital um, world, or if we need to normalize it and create, like someone mentioned, um, all the open source type files, um, we can do that. Um, and, and then document it to go into the preservation system. So this is quite exciting and hopefully we'll have, I'm not sure when we're supposed to have the, um, the prototype, but soon to be. So that's it, thank you.